Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jack. And today I wanted to do a sort of everyday carry video and show you the backpack that I like to use, some of the tech that I like to bring with me, and some of the accessories that I have inside my backpack that I use to help keep everything organized and keep everything together. I'll put links to everything in the description so you can go and check it out for yourself. Some of the tech that I'm gonna show, I have done longer videos on, so if you wanna see something more detailed on those, I'll link to those in the description as well. And one last thing, the channel is so close to reaching 10,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy this video and you wanna see more tech content from me, do consider subscribing, it would really help the channel out. So let's get to it. And another one last thing, there's a lot of building work going on outside, so I'm really sorry if it's a bit noisy. I'll try and work around it if I can. So the backpack that I'm using at the moment is the Moment MTW. This is the black version, but it does also come in red clay and an olive green as well. This is the 21 litre version. It does also come in 17 litres as well, which is a little bit smaller. I love how sleek and fairly minimal the pack looks. It's not too big, it's not too small. It's big enough for all of my daily tech. The backpack has three main compartments, which I will go through and show you throughout the video, along with what's in them. And there's not too many pockets on the outside, which I kind of like. It kind of gives it that sort of minimal sleek look. But there's loads of pockets and pouches on the inside while still being easy to access. And it pairs really well with some of Moment's other organisers, which I will show later on in the video. It's made from a recycled nylon fabric with a double waterproof layer to keep all your tech nice and dry. Flipping it over, on the back we've got the two backpack straps. They're nice and padded and they're really comfortable. They don't like dig into your back. And there's some sort of perforation going on so the backpack is nice and breathable. There is also a chest strap here which I don't actually use but I've just sort of left it attached. But that just hooks on there if you want to use that as well. The back is also next to the laptop compartment which is quite big. This can hold a pretty big laptop. And you'll actually hear the back is sort of slightly rigid, but it's not sort of too hard that it's uncomfortable. It does have some flex in it, but it does offer a nice amount of protection. On the top of the backpack, we have a carry handle. And on the side of the backpack, we have a nice big drinks pocket here. This is a bottle that I recently got from Amazon. I mainly use it for the gym, but I'll occasionally take it out with me because you can get a lot of water in there and it's good to stay hydrated. The bottom of it does also screw off, so you can put some protein powder in there or maybe just like a cheeky snack. Here's a front view again, and I'll just show you the side so you can get an idea of the thickness. So I'll show you the front pocket first, and then we'll go to the laptop pocket. And lastly, we'll take a look at the main compartment here in the middle. So the front pocket here has this vertical zip. If we open it up and take a look inside, it's great for all of those smaller bits of tech that you want quick access to. Because it has this vertical pocket, it means that when you're wearing the backpack, you can swing it around and then quickly get access to everything that you need in here, which is super helpful. It has this sort of cream, almost greenish interior lining, which carries on through the rest of the pack. And I really like that it does have a light interior because that makes it really easy to actually see what's going on in your bag and find what you're looking for. So we have the main compartment here. I've just got a generic notebook in there. A zip pocket at the back, three pouches on the front, and a pen holder here, which I'm just using for a pencil to go with my notepad at the moment. In the middle pocket here, I have my Anchor Maggo 622. This is a MagSafe battery, and it just snaps onto the back of your phone using magnets. Any MagSafe iPhone, so that's an iPhone 12 or newer. And it also has this handy little kickstand on the back, so you can prop your phone up in either vertical or landscape and charge it while you're watching a film or browsing the web. It does also have a USB-C port on the bottom, so you can also use it to charge things wired, which is super handy. I will also, sometimes in that pocket, have the Maggo 633, which is kind of like the 622's bigger brother. It has double the capacity. The 622 is a 5,000 mAh battery, and the 633 is a 10,000 mAh battery. And as well as that, it also has an extra USB port. So it has USB-C on the side and USB-A on the bottom, so you can charge a couple of things at the same time. So I always carry one of these with me, depending on how much battery I need. If I need a little bit of extra power, I'll go with the 633. I did also, not long ago, do a video comparing them both with the Apple MagSafe battery, but I do prefer the two Anchor batteries because one, they're more affordable, two, you get more charge with them, and three, you have that handy kickstand on the back, which I just find super useful. In this pocket on the left, I have the Insta360 X3. This is a 360 degree camera, which means that it has these dual cameras on either side, which both have a super wide field of view. And what it does is it stitches those two feeds together and creates this kind of ball or 360 degree video of everything going on around it. 
And it even has a mount point on the bottom for a selfie stick. And because it knows where that mount point is and where the selfie stick is, it can just completely remove it from the video. It's so cool, I can't get over just like how it even does it. You get this kind of floating drone camera look. And it means that you don't have to think about your framing because it's just filming everything. You can pan around and then completely reframe the video after you've shot it. Even changing between landscape and portrait video using the app. Me mode is pretty cool. It fixes the framing towards you. And again, it just removes the selfie stick like magic. It's a great bit of kit for sports, for cycling, trail running. And it's great for me running this channel on my own as it means that I can quickly grab a shot of me when I'm out shooting something and I can reframe it in post. I don't have to worry about whether I'm in the shot or not because I can just reframe it after I've shot it. Then over here on the right side, I have my AirPods Pro second generation. Spatial audio content sounds incredible. I love the new capacitive sensors in the stems. Now you can also adjust the volume right on the buds by swiping up and down and that works really well. The active noise cancellation is even better than the first ones. And the new case has a load of Find My features so I can keep track of them wherever I've left them, just like an AirTag. And just to talk briefly about my current phone, yep, yeah, I've got the iPhone 14 Pro Max and it's been fantastic upgrading from the 12 Pro Max. I really like Apple's implementation of the display cutout for the Face ID, the dynamic island as they call it. The way it surfaces, live activities like music, AirPods connectivity, timers. The cameras are for the most part really good, but they do tend to over sharpen photos a little bit too much for my liking. The new 48 megapixel Pro Roll stills just look so much more detailed than before. And I love using it when I'm out to shoot bits of B-roll for my videos. Overall, it's just a solid upgrade. In the main compartment, there's also this cord for attaching your keys to, although I actually use this for an AirTag so I can keep an eye on my backpack and just keep track of it wherever it is. Then lastly, we have this large zip pocket on the back, which is also sort of like a slight mesh material. And in here, I have a selfie stick, an Insta360 one, and I use this for the X3, along with this, which is the bullet time handle. This just screws onto the selfie stick, which you can extend, and then you can swing it around above your head and pretend that you're in the matrix. And this also doubles as a mini tripod, which is really great for just setting the X3 down and filming when I'm on the go. So that's everything in the front pocket. Again, this is a pretty large space actually, and it's just really easy to access it when you just swing your backpack around. Sometimes I might keep in a different mini tripod like this Manfrotto one. I like using that along with my Moment MagSafe mount. This literally just sticks on the back of your phone and then you're away and ready to go. And Moment does have a few different MagSafe accessories and I do have a few of them that I like to use. And these fit nice and easy in these pockets in the front. So that's the first compartment. Great for all those things you want fast access to. Next, let's take a look at the laptop pocket, which sits just up against your back when you're wearing the pack. The back is rigid for protection, but it's still nice and flexible and comfortable. It opens with a single zipper. This is the laptop pocket at the back. It holds a pretty big laptop. This is my 16 inch MacBook Pro. There is also another pocket just in front for something slightly smaller. I'll show you what I use for that in a moment. And then we have two pockets here and two more pen pockets. So this is my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is the main machine that I use for everything to do on the channel from planning my videos, editing them in Final Cut, making my thumbnails. I upgraded to this from a 2016 MacBook Pro with the touch bar and oh man, this was just such a good upgrade. It's so much faster rendering and exporting my projects. It has a proper row of function keys. I was never really that impressed by the touch bar. And they brought things back like MagSafe, the SD card slot and the HDMI port. The XDR screen is just stunning too. Everything just really pops and the HDR content looks incredible. And the whole experience just using macOS feels so smooth with the 120 Hertz ProMotion refresh rate. It's just a great machine to use overall. Next to that pocket is another slightly smaller one, perfect for a notebook or a textbook if you're studying, or an iPad. This is the newest iPad Pro with the M2 chip and the Magic Keyboard, and both of these fit just fine in that smaller pocket sleeve. And I've not actually really talked about this on the channel yet, mainly because I've just been super busy, but also because there's not really that much to talk about with the new iPad Pro. Yes, it has the M2 chip, which is, I think, 15% faster than the M1, but it's not sort of like a major performance boost to talk about. It does have a pretty cool feature with the Apple Pencil though. It can now detect the Apple Pencil hovering above the screen up to around 12 millimeters away. 
It's kind of like mousing over something on a computer, but it's also really useful for drawing or note-taking apps as you can see exactly where the stroke is gonna be as you get closer to the screen, and that's a nice addition. But other than that, there's not really that much to talk about. They still have the front camera on the wrong side, in my opinion. It's on the short side instead of the long side where it's sort of more centered when you've got the iPad docked in the Magic Keyboard. And I don't know about you, but I always use my iPad in landscape. Does anyone use it in portrait? Like, let me know in the comments if you're a portrait iPad person. <laughs> they did move the front camera to the long side on the base iPad, so I'm hoping that means that the next version of the Pro also gets the landscape front camera. But I do want to make some videos about the iPad a bit more on the channel because I just never really show it. Maybe something about the apps that I like to use. And along with the MacBook Pro, I do use the iPad in my sort of production. I use it for planning my videos, for writing, for doing thumbnails. Or sometimes I'll just sort of like do a quick sketch of a shot that I've got in my head that I want to sort of get down on some well, digital paper, I guess. You know, when I don't need my MacBook, if I'm just writing or planning a script and I'm on the go, I can take this with me instead of my heavier MacBook. But what I don't use it for is editing because Apple still hasn't brought Final Cut to the iPad. But Blackmagic has come to the rescue. They're releasing DaVinci Resolve. I believe it's supposed to be at the end of this year. And I haven't used DaVinci Resolve in literally years, so I'm going to have to relearn how to use that just so I can try it out. But uh, yeah, I do want to try out DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, and hopefully that pushes Apple to do something and release Final Cut on the iPad. So there's more pockets along here, and the two pen pockets. I've got just a pen here. And this is where I keep the Apple Pencil when it's in my backpack. In here, I have the SanDisk 2 terabyte solid state drive. This is where I keep all of my YouTube video project files, my footage, and I'd highly recommend it for keeping backups of your main computer. This drive is crazy fast too. I don't have any delays or slowdowns when I'm editing. When I first started making these videos, I was editing off just like an old hard drive that I had lying around. And yeah, that was just not a fun experience. I was trying to edit 4K videos off a slow hard drive and it was just a nightmare to work with. And then I picked this up and yeah, I just keep all of my project files on it and it's a great little thing to have. I love the sort of rubberized protection it's got. It's really small and lightweight and it's just easy to carry with me. Then in this pocket, I have an Apple Magic Mouse. I know this gets a lot of hate, but I've actually had this for a really long time. This is the original version that took batteries the ones since then have a lightning port on the bottom, then you just have to flip it over and plug it in, which is uh, an interesting design choice. But yeah, I just sort of have this with me for if I ever need a mouse. But it's probably time that I actually tried something else other than this. So if you've got any recommendations for Mac Mices, Mac Mices, Mac Mice, then let me know in the comments. So that's the laptop compartment, and this goes all the way down if you want to put like a big book in there as well. So there's one more compartment left to look at, and it sits in between the front pocket and the laptop bucket at the back, so it's just along here. So let's open it up. This opens with two zips. The one side goes all the way down, the other goes about halfway down because of the water bottle pocket. And this is the main space in the bag, the main compartment, the biggest sort of single space. I've got just a jumper in here, some spare shoes, a glasses case, and there's still plenty of room. I could get a lot more in here. You could get like a small coat in there as well if you needed, maybe a lunch box. I'll just take these out so you can see the full size with nothing in. So there we go, that's the full volume of the pocket. It's the biggest single space in the bag and it's just great for those bigger, bulkier items. And Moment does make a couple of things that go really well in here, so I'll show you those next. So this is the Moment MTW camera insert. It has a five liter capacity, but it's not just for cameras as you'll see in a moment. It's also been designed to specifically work with Moment's backpacks. Open it up, there's dual zips either side. And there's this rigid lid, which uh, you can actually remove the panel in here. And now that's taken out, you can just tuck this underneath the elastic band on the bottom. Inside, there are these two Velcro dividers that you can move up and down or just completely remove them to have one big open space. The left side has these two aluminium anchors, which line up perfectly with these two elastic loops built into Moment's backpacks to keep the insert nice and securely in place and stop it moving around inside your bag. And now with the front panel folded back, you can keep this open and you have quick access to all of your gear when unzipping your backpack from the side, just like that front pocket. But you could still use this in a backpack of a similar size. You just might not be able to secure it in place if it doesn't have any sort of internal loops like Moment's backpack. 
I've used it more for keeping my drone in than an actual camera. This is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. There's also some space for the controller and a bunch of filters, some spare batteries and some other accessories too. I've had the Mini 3 since its release back in May. It's the first drone I've ever had and ever flown, so it's been a bit of a learning experience. But I found it pretty easy to pick up and learn. I definitely recommend it for anyone that's new to drones. It's a Class Zero Sub 250 gram drone, which makes it exempt from some of the rules and regulations when it comes to flying. The picture quality is fantastic from such a little aircraft. It does have a few sensors and obstacle avoidance to help you not crash into things. And it's just a lot of fun to fly. I've made a few videos on it already showing the different shooting modes and some of the accessories that you have. And uh, yeah, if you want to check those out too, they'll be in the description. You can of course use this for your camera gear. I shoot with a Sony a7 III. You can also keep any lenses that you might have. Maybe a mini tripod plus some ND filters too. These are some Freewell ND filters and these can be securely stored in the little pouches built into the dividers. But overall, it's a super versatile insert. I love that you can move the dividers up and down. It's really well padded and protected, and it's just a great accessory to have to turn your backpack into more of a camera bag when you wanna go out and shoot some stuff. Oh, and I do love the orange colored lining too. And here we have a large mesh pocket, and in here I'm just keeping some hand sanitizer and some sun lotion because I just burn in the sun. I also like to keep this in the main compartment. This is Moment MTW Tech Organizer. It's also made from a similar recycled nylon fabric with the double layer waterproofing. Opening it up, you'll see we have these pockets on the two sides. In the middle, we have this divider that has these elastic loops for all of your cables and keeping them nice and tidy in. I've got a few of these braided USB-C cables. These two black ones are from Anchor and these are both a meter long each. This is a USB-C to lightning cable. Great, thanks Apple. I can't wait for the iPhone to switch to USB-C just like everything else. On the other side, I have a spare MagSafe cable for my MacBook Pro and these two very tiny USB-C to USB-C cables. These are just 30 centimeters long each. Again, they're from Anchor and they're great for when I just don't need a long cable. There's a large zip pouch here with a perforated mesh, and in here I have an Apple Watch charger. There's also these two pockets here. You could keep some SD cards in here. In here I've got the Belkin MagSafe mount for using with continuity camera. This is pretty neat. You just snap it onto the back of your phone and fold the stand out. Mount it on your MacBook lid, and just like that, you can use your iPhone as a way better quality webcam for your Mac for FaceTime or Zoom. There's no apps or extra software needed. MacOS Ventura just recognizes it, and it has these really cool effects like portrait and center stage that tracks you and follows you around the room. So I have all these cables, but I'm also gonna need a charger. So for that, I have this. This is the Anker Gam Prime 737 charger. And this thing is just fantastic. It has a max output of 120 watts shared across all the ports when using all of them at the same time, or a max of 100 watts if you're using just one of the C ports, which is enough for my 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's almost as powerful as the charger that came with my MacBook, but way smaller and with the extra ports it means that I can share that power to multiple devices all at once. My iPad Pro, my iPhone, a power bank or my watch if I need to charge a bunch of stuff all at once. And then in this pocket once again I've got the Anker Maggo 622 so that's great for putting a little power bank in. And there's still plenty of space in here to keep some more stuff so you could really pack this full if you really wanted. They do also have a more slimline version too. This is their Minitech organizer. This has a few pouches on the two sides, again, for cables or power banks or a power brick charger. These are a couple of the 30 centimeter USB-C anchor cables that we saw from earlier, but in black this time. This is the Anker Nano Pro 521. This is much smaller than the 737. In fact, it's so small it just fits perfectly in the mini organizer pocket here. It's like they were made for each other. This has two USB-C ports, which both share 40 watts between them, and that's more than enough for charging my iPad Pro and something smaller at the same time. And then on this side, again, I've got another Apple Lightning cable for charging my phone. And this is a Apple USB-C to USB-C cable. This actually came with the new M2 iPad Pro. They now give you a braided cable or a woven cable, as they call it. And this feels really nice, really nice, high quality cable. 
This organizer doesn't have a divider in the middle like the larger one, but it does have a pen holder in the middle, which is perfect for an Apple Pencil. Here are the two organizers next to each other to give you an idea of their size and their thickness. And here they are opened up so you can see them both side by side. As you can see, the mini one will fold flat, whereas the standard one has these little tags here that hold it open so that it stays up and it can sort of stand up on its own. And generally speaking, I'll only take one of these with me. If I've got my MacBook with me, I'll take the larger one as it's got the more powerful 737 charger in, which is perfect for my MacBook. And if I've just got my iPad or my phone with me, I'll take the mini organizer as this has got the 521 charger, which is perfect for my iPad or charging my phone. Now, there are a few backpacks out there that have tech organizers built in, but I really like these ones because they're removable and I can have different organizers for different devices depending on what I'm carrying. And then I just take the organizer with me that I need. I don't have to swap everything around like you would with a built-in tech organizer. So I really like both of these organizers from Moment. And lastly, there's just one more bit of tech that I want to show you, and that's this. This is the Anchor Gam Prime 737 power bank. This thing has a massive 140 watts of power output from a single USB-C port. So you can use this to charge a MacBook Pro at its fastest charging speed, which is pretty nuts. Or fast charge, a bunch of tech, all at the same time. It's a real portable powerhouse when it comes to charging speed on the go. And it has this super useful screen so you can actually see how much power it's putting out from each port. It has a 24,000 milliamp hour capacity. And I have covered this battery before on the channel if you want to see some charging tests. So go check out that video. So that's been my everyday tech and the backpack that I keep it all in. I'll try and make sure that there are links to everything in the description below. But overall, I just think it's a great backpack for everyday use or for university. There's plenty of space in here for a large laptop, for an iPad, any textbooks, or you can turn it into more of a camera or a drone bag using the camera insert, which I love. It just makes the backpack so much more versatile. And those tech organizers are great for keeping everything neat and tidy in your bag and you don't have lots of random wires just hanging all over the place. Let me know in the comments below what backpack you've been using and what tech you'd like to carry with you. I'd love to know. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. And if you'd like to help me reach 10,000 subscribers, hit subscribe and the bell to see more tech videos from me. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.